Hello, my name is Jared Smith. I'm the lead statistician at the HHS OIG Audit Group, and I'm here today to talk about how to pull a simple random sample uh, using RATSTATS. Uh, so RATSTATS 2010 and 2007 both have the random numbers, single stage random number option. That's the option we're going to use today. Uh, when we start that option, it brings up this screen. It, it asks about seed numbers, names, uh, quantity of numbers we generated, uh, the sampling frame. So we're going to go through each of these and discuss uh, what they're for. So the first one is, do you want to enter a seed number? So RATSTATS will use a seed number whether or not you say yes or no in this field. If you say yes, it'll use a seed number that you enter. If you say no, it'll generate its own seed number. Uh, so if you say no, you know you don't have to worry about someone asking, well, why did you come with this seed number? Because the software is doing it for you. Uh, generally, you'll say yes if you're trying to replicate a previous sample, because you'll take the seed number from the previous sample generated in RATSTATS uh, and enter it in here, and that will duplicate that previous sample. And we'll show an example of that uh, near the end. Next, we name our review, and we can name it uh, pretty much anything we want. Uh, you can even leave, leave it blank. Uh, for our purposes, we'll name it test one. Uh, next, we have enter the quantity of numbers to be generated. So here we have two fields. One is sequential order. The other is spares and random order. So for sequential order, we're going to do, that's our sample size. So if we want to pull 100 records, then this would just be 100. Uh, spares in random order. Uh, is if you want to pull additional items to use in the case there's issues with the original sample. Uh, it turns out that a lot of people make mistakes with spares. So I would not pull spares unless you're working closely with a statistician. Next, we have the sampling frame, uh, which should be consecutively numbered. And we enter the smallest number in our sampling frame and uh, the largest number in our sampling frame. I want to talk a moment more about sampling frames, since this is a concept that may be new to you if you haven't done a lot of sampling work in the past. The idea of a sampling frame is the actual physical list of all the items you could potentially pull as part of your sample. So in this uh, sort of fake data, the line represents a claim. And so the sampling frame is the list of all claims that could be pulled within the sample. Uh, it's important to realize that your statistical estimate only applies to your sampling frame. So if your frame, for example, contains claims greater than $5,000, then you cannot make an estimate to claims less than $5,000. Uh, it's also important that the data in your frame it should be reliable. Uh, for example, if a row is duplicated with other rows, then that can cause significant issues. Uh, so you know, it's important to have good data in your frame. It's important that your frame cover the items that are of interest to you. And it's important that each item in the frame is uh, you know, unique. So suppose I'm provided this data. You know, I, I download this data from my uh, sort of claims uh, database. I save it. Uh, now I'm getting the data ready to pull a sample. So one field that you want in your data set when you pull a sample is a uh, record number field. So we'll call it record number. Uh, and what this will do is uniquely number all the records in my final frame. All right, so, and it should be consecutive from one to the total records in the frame. So here we've got one all the way up to 188477. Uh, now, what if I end up deleting some rows? Well, if I'm deleting rows, my frame has changed, and I would want to renumber the frame. The reason that we do this is so that when we pull the random numbers in, X, in RAT stats, we're able to match them back to the frame in a one to one fashion. So, for example, if I don't have this field and I pull record 10, well, what's record 10? I could refer to the row number 10. But that would change depending on how the data is sorted. So to protect myself from losing my ability to replicate the sample just because my frame is sorted by something different, I create this record number field, consecutively number it one from the to the total number of records in the frame, and now I can replicate my sample regardless of how uh, the data is sorted. All right. So if we go back uh, to look at uh, rat stats. We'll see, uh, again, the low number was 1. The high number is 188477. And this is just the uh, highest record count in the sampling frame. Uh, so next, we decide where to output the sample. Uh, you, know, you can really use any output type. It's a little easier to manage the sample numbers if you use an access file or Excel file. We'll use an Excel file for the purpose of this example. Then we need to pick the name of our file. 
I'm going to use test numbers. Uh, and then I click continue. And right now, RATSTATS is generating the random numbers. So again, it's not pulling the actual claims yet. It's generating the numbers. And then the user, you have to go in and actually get the claims from your sampling frame. So what does that mean? All right, so let's look at what RATSTATS output. So again, the time right now is 9.41. It's August 1st, 2018. Uh, RATSTATS uses the name that I gave this uh, audit. And we can see that it provides uh, one, two, three, four different columns. One is the frame size, that's straightforward enough. One is the seed number, and I'll show you how that works in a little bit. Uh, the order is the order that the random number was generated. So effectively, RATSTATS is going in and generating random numbers. The first random number is uh, 159844. To make it a little easier to match the random numbers against the sampling frame, uh, it sorts the random numbers not by the order they were selected, but by sort of the road number. Okay, so I almost have my sample, right? Right now I have my random numbers, but in order to get my sample, I need to match these random numbers against my sampling frame. So how can I do that? Well, one way to do that is to do it manually. Uh, so by manually doing it, I would go in my record number field and I would search for each of the records, uh, sorry, each of the random numbers that were selected. So here we've got 2074. If we look, that's the first uh, smallest random number that's in my sample. So then I would copy this and move it to a new file. Of course, that could be tedious and, and you could make a mistake on it. So sort of an easier way to do it is to use a join command in any sort of database language or alternatively use the VLOOKUP command uh, in Excel. So... So how does VLOOKUP work? I'm not going to go into the details. That's beyond the scope of this presentation. But it's an Excel command that allows you to sort of put the list of your random numbers in one column. And then you can refer to that, effectively say, hey, find this number uh, in my sampling frame. And then return to me the claim number or whatever other data that you want. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, the key thing to realize is that RATSTAT is not giving you your final sample items. It's giving you the random numbers, and then you have to go to your sampling frame. That's why it's very important to number your sampling frame beforehand so you're able to uniquely match the RATSTAT uh, random numbers with the sample items in your frame. All right, we're almost done. I just want to show you one more thing, which is the uh, seed number and how that works. So if we go uh, to RATSTATS and we leave everything the same, uh, we'll change the file name here. So suppose I rerun the sample. Let's call it test2 and see what happens. So when, you, when you, we rerun the sample, we're going to get another set of in this case, 100 numbers, but they're a different set of 100 numbers. You know, we can sort of see that if we put hold them, put them side by side. All right, so we can see that the first, the smallest random number that was selected in our um, newer sample was 2368. It was 2078 here. Then the second smallest was 4896. In this case, it was. 5955, five, five, uh, and so on and so forth. These are not the same. So what if I did want to get the same sample? What would I do? So the secret in, in getting the same sample is when you says, do you want to enter a seed number? You say yes, um, and then you enter the seed number from the sample you're trying to replicate. So the seed number from my second sample was 35035.5. 7, 4, and we can see that if we just look right here. Here we go. We got 3503574. Then I'm going to output the sample to a new file. We'll call it test number C. And it's going to pull my random numbers for me. All right. Um, now that we have the, the random numbers, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the results that we got uh, from the first sample, sorry, the second sample, um, with our newly generated random numbers. So, 
All right, so we can see um, 9.45, that's the sort of the current time, that's the sample that was just pulled. Uh, and then we also have the sample that was pulled two minutes beforehand. They've got the same seed number, and if we go down the list, you'll see these are all the exact same number. So by entering our own seed number and putting the number from a previous sample, we were able to repeat our, our previous sample. In other words, we could show someone that the sample really was generated with RADSTATS using that number, and they can repeat all our methods methodology. Uh, so that's everything. Uh, I guess one final note is that if you want to pull a stratified sample, it's just as easy as pulling a simple random sample, except you now apply all the steps I just talked about separately to each stratum. So if you treat each stratum like its own separate frame, then you use the single stage random numbers, generate the random numbers for each stratum, uh, and then you have a stratified sample. It's that simple. Um, so hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, we should have a, a few more videos in the future discussing some of the other modules of RATSTATS. Uh, so thank you, and everyone have a great day.